This video is going to be a short walkthrough of some example tasks which will help you to prepare for your music theory exam and to familiarise yourself with the notation software which is used within it. So the first example task at grade 6 to 8 is to write a phrase with a pitched instrument using the following. 16th notes, 8th notes, quarter notes, half notes, whole notes and their equivalent rests. So to first get started with that and add some notes we need to make sure we're in the note tab at the top here. And once we are we can choose from one of these different note values so you can click on quarter, half notes, whole notes etc. So if we wanted to add a whole note we'd make sure we've clicked on that and you can hover over the, over the stave and you can see the different pitches and you click the notes in. So then we can go back and choose some half notes and click a half note in, quarter note, etc. Now if we wanted to replace one of these with a rest, we can click on the note that we want to do that to and then click on this X in the top right hand corner here and you'll see that replace with a rest of the same value. So likewise, if we were to click on one of these notes here and delete them, uh, they'd be replaced with rests of the same value. If we want to convert one of them to a dotted note, again, click on the note or rest that you want to make dotted. And again, make sure you're in the note tab and use this dot button here, which will open up options of a single or a double dot. So if we clicked on the single dot there, you'll see that note convert to a single dotted uh, half note. The second example task at grades six to eight is to write a short phrase which includes slur, sforzando, tenuto and staccato notation and then to try adding an accent to one of those notes as well. So first to add the notes in we'll start again by making sure we're in the note tab in there and that we've selected um, a note value to input so I'll choose eighth notes for this one and we can uh, click some eighth notes in there. And now once we've done that if we want to add any articulations to those we can click on the note that we want to add the articulation to go up to this articulation tab up here and if we wanted it to be an accent we can click on that and it will add an accent and we can click on it again and it will uh, remove the accent um, same for the tenuto you can click on that and the staccato you see the staccato dot appear there and go away when I click it again if we wanted to add a slur we've got the slur tool up here which once we've got that we can drag it to different lengths if we needed to um, and remove it by either clicking the X or clicking the slur tool again. And then finally, if we wanted to add the Sforzando, we can go back into the dynamic tab here and select this button and you'll see that up here. Again, you can remove it by clicking it again. So the third example task is to add a dynamic marking to a bar of music followed by a crescendo or diminuendo. So to do that we first just want to click on the note under which we'd like the dynamic marking to appear. So we'll choose that C note there. And then if we just make sure we're in the dynamic tab up here you'll see a list of options for dynamic markings. So if you click on one you'll see them appear underneath the score and then you click on them again and you'll see it remove. Um, if you want to add a crescendo or diminuendo, you can use these two tools here. And then you can drag them uh, by clicking and holding um, to different lengths. So the fourth example task is to write an ascending scale which uses accidentals and then to try this descending and using a key signature instead of accidentals. So first off, if we did want to use a key signature, we just make sure that we're in the measure tab up here and that we've clicked on this key signature button. And you'll see that when I click each of these options, they're reflected into the score. So if we go back, just choose no key signature for now. So if we wanted to add some notes in, we'll make sure we're in the note tab and that we've selected the note value that we want. So we'll go for quarter notes or crotchets here. You can hover over 
see the pictures and click those in where you'd like to. So I'll just go through and do that. So now if we wanted to remove this empty bar here, we just go up to the measure tab again and hit the minus button there and you'll see it removed. If you wanted to change any of the notes or even delete them entirely, uh, you can first change them by dragging them up and down like this. And if you wanted to delete it, you can use this X button up here. If you wanted to add an accidental to any of them, again, click on the note that you want to add the accidental to. We'll go up into the note tab up here and you'll see these accidental options here. So if we wanted that to be a flat, click on flat. And if you keep clicking through, it'll cycle through the options until you end up with no accidental again. The fifth example task at grades six to eight is to write two consecutive chords using quarter notes and to make sure that the notes are stacked on top of each other when doing this. So um, we'll first make sure we're in the note tab up here and that we've selected the note value we want to input. So we're going to use quarter notes for this. Um, we'll hover over, see the pitches and click those in where we'd like them. You can stack them on top like that. I'll do the same for the second one. And as was the case with the scales before, if you want to delete any, you can click on them and use the cross button up here or you can add accidentals using the accidental buttons here. The sixth example task is to write one to two bars of piano notation in both treble and bass clefs, then add a glissando between two notes and pedal notation as well. So. We'll first start off by adding some notes in using the note tab up here and selecting one of the note values that we'd like to add in. So we use half notes, for example, here. We can hover over and see all the different pitches and click to add one in. And if we want to add some notation into the treble clef, we'll just click in there. And say if we want to add some eighth notes, we'll click on eighth notes and hover over to add those in. Now to add an extra bar, uh, we can go to the measure tab up here and click the plus button there. And we can now add some more notes here. So now if we wanted to add a glissando, we could click on this note here if we wanted to add it there. And go up to the ornament tab and to the glissando button here and you'll see that input. Um, and if we wanted to add some pedal notation, we could go back down here, click on this note, for example, and up to the dynamic tab to find pedal notation, which you'll see at the end there. Click on that. And we can drag that to size as well. So the seventh example task involves amending the note value within a tempo indicator. Um, so to do this, I can see the tempo indicator here, we just click on the note and within this button here, you'll see a drop down of different options. So if I clicked on this one here, for example, and then save, you'd see that update there. You go back and change those as many times as you need. The last example question involves using uh, drum notation. Now in the exam you'll be presented already with a drum stave to use, um, but for the purpose of practicing in advance here, uh, you will need to add one yourself by going up to this button up here. If you click on that and then manage instruments, add an instrument, percussion, and then if you click drum set, so we've now added a drum stave, um, which means we can get rid of that original uh, piano treble clef. Uh, we can click done, and now you'll see a drum stave for you to practice with. So if we first wanted to add in some hi-hat notes, uh, we could just first make sure that we're in the uh, note tab up here, and we can select some eighth notes, for example. If we hover over, we can click those in, And now if we want to add in some uh, bass and snare drum notes into there, we'll go up to this voice one button here. If we click on that and select use voice two, 
that will give you access to the lower drum voices. So now, for example, if we clicked over here and just make sure we're on quarter notes, we can add in some quarter note uh, bass and snare drum notes, which will be in the right direction. And now just because the example task asks us to add a fill at the end, I'll put uh, some 16th note snares there. And if, for example, we wanted to delete these uh, hi-hat notes here, we'd go up to use voice one again. So that now takes us back. So we've got access to this top voice where we can edit and move around all the hi-hats. So click on the one that we want to remove and click the cross button here. And likewise, if we wanted to remove this extra bar here, um, you can just go to measure and hit the minus button there. And finally, if you wanted to amend these note values here, uh, you can click on them and go back into the note section here and then click the quarter note and you'll see that convert to a quarter note rest.